Hey guys, it's your favorite reliability test guy here with another fun-filled, action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. Today's video is on MIL standard 18H method 514.8 section 4 test process. If you haven't done so already and you would like to learn more about vibration testing and shock testing, don't forget to pick up a copy of my book Master in Vibration and Shock Testing for Barnes & Noble in the link below. Alright, let's get started. In this video, we will cover test facility, test procedures, vibration control strategies, instrumentation, test interruptions, test setup, and test execution in more detail. First, let's talk about test facility. Your test facility should include a vibration shaker, a slip table, fixtures, and transducers for measurement and data recording. The testing should be performed under standard ambient conditions, unless specified otherwise. In addition, the facility must ensure compliance with vibration tolerances and control strategies. This guarantees accurate simulation of real-world conditions. Let's go ahead and jump into Procedure 1 for general vibration testing now. For general vibration testing, shaker tables are used to simulate environmental stresses. There are three key factors we need to consider when selecting a vibration shaker to use. Size and mass of the test item, frequency range, and force acceleration requirements. One important consideration is modal surveys of both the test fixture and the test item. Fixture resonances can significantly impact test accuracy, leading to overtests or undertests. If the fixture or item resonance coupling occurs, special control strategies may be required such as acceleration or force limit control. Let's take a look at Procedure 2 Loose Cargo Transportation. In this procedure, a package tester is used to simulate loose cargo transportation. The package tester imparts a 1-inch peak-to-peak circular synchronous motion at 5 Hz. The test item is not secured to the bed, ensuring realistic simulation of transportation forces. For large items, the test uses actual transport vehicles on representative test surfaces. This simulates real-world road vibrations, shocks, and environmental conditions. The test setup must mimic the actual transportation configuration, including tie-downs and weight distribution. Now let's talk about vibration control strategies. These are critical for maintaining test accuracy and repeatability. Acceleration input control controls the input acceleration at specific points. Force control uses force gauges to match real-world interface forces. Acceleration limit strategy ensures response levels remain within specified limits. Waveform control, used for complex dynamic loads. Each strategy is selected based on test requirements and real-world applications. For example, force control is essential when field conditions differ significantly from lab conditions. Instrumentation plays a key role in accurate measurements and compliance. Some of the major devices used include Accelerometers are the primary measurement device for vibration levels, and strain gauges are used for structural stress monitoring. Force gauges are used to measure interface forces. Proper calibration is essential. All instruments should be traceable to national calibration standards and mounted correctly to avoid erroneous readings. Sometimes test interruptions happen. It could be equipment malfunction, test item failure, or exceed in tolerances. Whenever we have a test interruption, we should follow these steps. First, determine the cause, such as equipment failure, test item failure, or scheduled interruption. Analyze data to ensure no overtest or undertest conditions occurred. And restart or modify the test based on findings. For test item failures, we either replace the component and restart or proceed with a risk assessment. All test deviations must be documented. For test item failures, we either replace the component and restart or proceed with a risk assessment. All test deviations must be documented. Before starting the test, the test item should be mounted to represent its operational use. This includes using the correct mounting fixtures, ensuring secure connections, installing instrumentation properly, for example, for loose cargo tests, proper fencing and placement are crucial to simulate real-world conditions in large assembly transport tests. The vehicle and test loads must match field conditions. 
Finally, let's walk through a typical execution process. Review the test planning requirements. Conduct pre-test checkout. Perform modal survey if required. Mount the test item properly. Set up instrumentation. Apply low level vibration to verify setup. Conduct full level testing with continuous monitoring. Inspect item post test for signs of degradation. And document results and analyze failure modes. The key takeaways from this lecture are that test facility and setup matter. You need to ensure proper equipment and environmental conditions. You also need to ensure appropriate control strategies to prevent over-testing and under-testing. We covered three test procedures for different scenarios. First, procedure one, which covered general vibration. It uses shakers to simulate environmental stresses. Number two is loose cargo. It mimics transportation forces on unsecured items. And large assembly transport, which uses actual vehicles and real-world surfaces. We also covered critical control strategies, including acceleration and force control to ensure realistic test loads, and waveform control, which replicates complex dynamic conditions. We covered proper instrumentation setup, which ensures accurate data collection, and handling test interruptions and failures. Identify the cause, such as an equipment failure, a test item issue, or a tolerance breach. Analyze the data to avoid test deviations, and restart or modify tests based on findings and document all deviations. Lastly, we covered proper test execution to ensure compliance. Follow structured test steps from pre-checks to post-test analysis for testing success. Secure mounting and instrumentation placement for valid results. And document all findings for compliance and failure analysis. And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.